Hello everyone, this is Yolanda and in today's lesson, this is our second lesson for our Learn to Knit series. I have already cast on, I believe it was 16 or 17 stitches. Um, and these, uh, you can cast on in whichever method you prefer, remember, but not the provisional cast on. The provisional is only, um, like it says, provisional, so it's not uh, permanent. So I will put the link for the um, first uh, video, the first video lesson. Um, somewhere up here, I'll put a little card, maybe somewhere around here on the screen, you'll see a little eye with the card. If you click on that, you can go to the first lesson. So today, we're going to be learning how to do the knit stitch. The knit stitch is really like the basic stitch with the knit and the purl. Just knowing those two, you can do a lot of things. So today, um, let me see how many I have here. With two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Oh, let me take this one off. I just want to start with like twenty stitches, okay? Eighteen to twenty. And we're just going to practice. So since I told you that I am a um, continental knitting knitter, I hold the yarn in my left hand, just like if I was doing a crocheting. So this is a tail. We don't want to crochet with that. I'm going to try to kind of move it back here, get it out of the way. And so here, you're going to be holding the needle with your stitches. These are live stitches here in your left hand. The empty needle is on the right. Once we knit all these stitches off onto this needle, then this needle will have the working uh, stitches and then we'll just turn it over and put it back in our left hand and continue if you want to do a next row. So here, the way that I wrap my yarn around my, my hand is the same way that I wrap, wrap it when I crochet. Um, if you wrap it with a circle when you crochet, go ahead and do that, um, whatever feels comfortable to you. Now here, to knit, uh, and you hear this a lot when you say that insert the needle knitwise. What they mean is that we are going to be holding the needle here with the stitches on our left hand. The, when you're going to knit, the yarn is coming from behind the needle. When you purl, it's coming from the front. So right now, I'm holding it right behind. And usually, it's um, once you get a little faster, the closer to the edge, is uh, easier to slide off the stitches, but then you also have to learn a little bit of control. So now we're gonna get this needle. I had this on top here, and I'm gonna go enter the stitch from left into right. So right here from here to there, and you could see the stitch there. And then all you need to do is grab that yarn. And when you're starting, you can hold the tip there, and then you're gonna pull it out the front then you can slide it off and that's your first knit stitch once again you go from the left to the right there you're going to grab that yarn go underneath the yarn there grab it and then bring it through and that is the second knit stitch just go ahead and drop it off just like that and for right now, if you want to do just a basic scarf, I would like, or a cowl, um, I want you, this is, I'm using a size, uh, uh, what is it, 10 and a half needles, it's six and a half uh, millimeters, and I'm using medium weight yarn, this is a ball that I just caked it on, and when you're knitting, you it, it is easier to just go ahead and um, wrap either your balls or do them into a cake with a winder, and then it's easier because the, the the yarn is going to be coming out in an even pressure. So once again here, let me do this and show you once again. You go in from the left to the right, grab the yarn, just go underneath there and bring it under. I'm exaggerating my hand like way up here. Usually I do keep it closer um, and that way the yarn isn't so far away. I just go ahead once more time, go through the back Grab that yarn and bring it out through that little front loop. And now, it's hard to tell on the first loop. Let me see if I could get these. But you could kind of start to see that there's already a little bit more of a bump here than there. And that is how you do the knit stitch. Now, for this lesson, it is a short lesson, but it's really important that you learn how to do it. Remember, there is a, a little um, gear 
kind of looks like a little gear icon on the lower right hand of the video. If you click on that, you can change the speed of the video to go faster or slower. But here I'm trying to go slow for you. Let me show you once again how I wrap the yarn. I just put it in there just like that. And this is how I control my tension. This is the same way I wrap it when I'm doing a crochet. So if you already have a method of wrapping with your left hand, you're, you're a right-handed crocheter, just go ahead and do that. If you're a left-handed crochet, do it the same way. That way you, that's one less thing you're gonna have to learn. You already know how to tension the yarn with your hand. So then you just need to learn this motion. And you don't have to be moving your needles a lot. It's really the tips of the needles that are gonna do a lot of the work. So once again, you're gonna go from the left to the right, just like that. I'm gonna show you how it looks in the back. You're gonna grab that yarn on that tip of that needle. And then you're gonna bring this back through and drop it off your needle. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do these stitches here. You can slow down the camera if you want. And what I want you to do, if you would like to try an easy project, I want you to cast on, um, depending on how thick you want, how wide you want your cowl, between 20 and 25 stitches. And then I want you to just do your knit stitch across, just like I'm doing here, all those stitches. And then you're gonna just turn your work over. I'm gonna get here to the end and show you how we do that. And then you continue to just do a knit stitch for every row and I will, I'm going to do like 80 rows, maybe 100 rows and then we'll stitch it together. You can just stitch at the end with a, a slip stitch or whatever stitch you want to use to hide that. If you want to make it into a cow or else you're just going to, um, I'm going to teach you how to cast off so then that you can make a scarf and it will be a garter stitch. When you do knit in every row, it creates a garter stitch. But I want you to try to make this little, even if it's just a little swatch, you don't have to do a whole, um, a whole scarf or cowl. But I'm gonna show you how here, I've come to the last stitch. So now you see that all the stitches are on this needle and this one is empty. So now all you do is put this needle here, once again, and then we're gonna do a stitching. Now you could see the little bumps there a lot easier. Can you see that? This is a knit side, because it looks like a little chain, like a little V, and this is a little bump, so it's like the pearl side. But once we finish this, I'm gonna put it in my left hand, and then I'm just gonna continue, want you to continue practicing doing the knit stitch until you're able to control that. When you first do it, the tension is going to be off. Some are going to be tight. Some are going to be loose. Um, don't worry about that so much right now as getting down, just getting used to the technique of using this. And I want you to just practice doing a few rows. I'm going to continue to work on this and make a small little cowl. Um, and I think I'll probably end up doing like 80 rows, 80 to 100, and then sewing it. So see here, I just want to show you what it's going to look like. I'm still doing the same thing I did on the front. This is still a knit stitch, but once you continue doing a knit stitch in every row, it turns into your little garter stitch. It's very attractive, and it's easy to do, and you can start making projects right from the beginning so that it could encourage you to keep going. I hope I'm not speaking too much, but I just I want you to know that just because you only know one stitch doesn't mean that you can't make something beautiful. And here, I'm going to go back again from the left to the right, grab that yarn, and pull it through. Left to right, grab the yarn, pull it through. And then you just slide it off the needle there. And you can control your stitch if you want to do it tighter it's up to you it's going to be really your own tension don't do it so tight that you can't get your needles in there or that you can't slide your work it should be able to slide around just like this see and one of the benefits about continental knitting i believe that it is faster once you start to learn how to do it because you're not having to waste time wrapping the stitch around so here i'm just going to finish doing this for you in grab it out left to right grab the yarn come under and drop it off in grab the yarn pull it out drop it off there was some um 
uh, my friend who's a school teacher, Susan, she had a little saying, kind of like, stab it, grab the goods, pull them out, drop it off, <laughs> something like that. It was just kind of funny. She was teaching the kids. So I'm going to do just a few rows here off camera, and then I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. This is all just a knit stitch. And you could see how it starts giving a nice little shape. I'm going to do a few rows, come back and show you what it would look like. And then I want you to practice this between cast on between 20 to 25 stitches on your needles. If you want to use big chunky needles like, you know, like uh, those, uh, I have some here that are like a 12 millimeter that you would probably use with the chunky yarn. These are from... Um, well, it used to be called Wool in the Gang or something like that. I think they're called We Are Knitters now. But these are beautiful needles. And um, you could just make it with a chunky yarn, except that I would probably only put maybe like 10 or 12 stitches instead of the 20 because it is going to be quite thick. So let me go ahead and ha you go ahead and practice just doing a knit stitch. That's all we're doing. And I'm going to do a few rows, come back, and then show you what that looks like. It is a knit stitch, but once we do it in every row, it now is the carter stitch. Okay, here I've done a few rows, and I wanted to show you here that by knitting every row means I knit this way, then I turn around and knit the other side. Just like we had said, once I finish knitting this, it's full, then you would put it back onto your left hand and start knitting once again. Remember the yarn is always coming from behind the needle. So when you do knit in every row, you will get this stitch, which is called a garter stitch. And one of the great things about this, it looks very attractive, but also it doesn't roll the edges. So you could use it for scars, for cows, or even, you know, uh, I suppose you could even make a blanket, I don't know, placemats, different things like that. Well, one of the ways, you, if, if you do a few, just maybe a little square like this, you could do a gauge swatch. So then you could figure out how many stitches per inch. Now, I've already measured this, and I do get, um, for one inch, I get four stitches. And then um, if I count them, one, two, three, four stitches per inch. And then I think it was four rows. One, two, three, four rows. So if you wanted to just do a little swatch and say you wanted to make some uh, a specific thing, maybe a blanket, a baby blanket, 36 inches by 30, you would just measure how many stitches you need and then you would multiply that. Like for this, for instance, is four stitches. So I would multiply four times 36 to know how many stitches I need to have across. And then um, four times 30 so that I could know how many rows I would need. So let's pretend now just for the sake of this, that you have done how many rows you want for either a cow that you're going to end up sewing in a circular tube later, or maybe a scarf. So now before you can take this off, if we just pull this off, you're going to be, all this work will fall apart because these are live stitches, meaning they're not um, secured yet. So now what I'm going to show you how to do is how to, one method of binding off, there's several different methods depending on the stitch you're using. So right now we're just going to do a basic bind off to secure this and then let's pretend this is like uh, I would say maybe 140 between 120 to 140 rows for a cowl or whatever you're making and then you would uh, bind it off and then you could stitch them together with a little um, yarn needle or whichever way you want to secure them so in order to bind this off let me see if I could get a little closer here so you could see better let me try to focus that sorry guys so the we're going to start, we're still going to knit everything. Well, this is a garter stitch. So I'm going to get my yarn and just put it in the back like I usually do. See if I can get that. Just like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put this a little bit, let me see, put this closer to the tips. So all we're going to do is that you need to knit to bind them off. So here, my first one, remember, from left to right. Oops, I'm going to get my... And then you're going to go ahead and knit this one off. This one, you go ahead and just throw that off right there. And now to bind off, we're going to knit the next one. Once you have these two done, then we need to bring this one back over the stitch so we're locking the stitch. So you get your needle that's in your left hand. Go from left to right under here, right? And you're going to lift that up, grab this stitch, and pull it out. It makes a little knot and now you've made this secure that stitch. 
once again now you go ahead and knit the next one so you'll have two knitted stitches on your right needle you're going to stick the neck left needle from left to right right there under there then you bring this loop here through that little stitch there can you see the loop in there let me see if I, i'm not don't see if it's uh i don't think it's uh focused enough let me try to focus it here you go left and now we're going to have to do another knit every time you're going to knit you're going to bind off you're going to need two stitches there so right here we're going to bring the needle left to right this one we're going to bring in between that little loop just like that we're not grabbing yarn with this second needle we're just pulling out the loop and that's securing that edge right there once again I'm going to knit my next stitch I need to have two stitches here now I bring in my needle from left to right on top of the needle here on top of the other needle and then I'm going to bring this stitch out between the loop without grabbing the yarn so you're just going to grab this little loop bring it out there see that and now you could drop that stitch off of your needle so you go, that's how you would do a basic um, bind off I try not to do it too tight but now you could see that these stitches are secure they're not going to unravel and that edge is done once again just like that knit the next stitch go there grab this one and when you're first starting if you need to you can use your finger to hold that so it doesn't fall off your needles knit the next one bind off now remember there's a little um, gear icon down here so you could change the speed so if you want to do it slower this is all you're going to do to bind it off I want you to try to make at least even if it's a cow so I would say like uh, cast on between um, 20 and so stitches if you're using this size needle and this medium weight yarn just a worsted yarn if you want to make it bigger then you know you're just gonna to have to count how many stitches you did per inch and then multiply that by the number of inches like this is um, just a little over five and a half inches wide um, um, just a little under six if I wanted to make it um, 10 inches wide because some people like to have a really uh, thick cow then you would do 40 stitches or whatever but that's how you would measure so I want you to try to take this week to practice just doing the knit stitch and the garter stitch which is the same just knit stitch and then practice just binding off like this and if you want you can make a little scarf just keep going adding rows until you get the desired length and uh, if you use like a variegated yarn like the Caron cakes it will start changing the different colors and it just looks really pretty it's in the uh, lesson very soon we're going to be showing you how you change yarn uh, colors of your yarn but right here I just wanted to do a lesson where you can actually learn something to make a project in this case we're going to make a little scarf or if you want to make a cow you would just make the length that you want usually probably I guess I would say around 23 inches maybe 24 and then you would stitch the both edges together and then that way you could sew them together to make a little cowl if you just bind it off like this you just have one long panel and you can make a scarf but this is really good for knitting in front of the TV when you're just watching or you're just trying to maybe you're in a car ride or in an office you could just do a basic stitch you don't have to worry about counting stitches once you get all your stitches on you're just going to knit every stitch in every row when you turn around and then you could be making your scarves in uh, no time at all that way you don't waste any time in an office here when we get to the end show you here we have our last stitch right there we're going to cast that off now this stitch right there that's still alive right there so you would just cut don't do it really short I do it usually four or five inches you're going to cut that off and then you're just going to loop it up bring that stitch through there just like if you were crocheting to bind it off just right there pull it shut now all you need to do is weave that stitch into that end 
if you had done this like maybe like I said like 120 maybe 130 rows or so you could then get this put them together sew your edges here and you would have a cylinder you could use that for a cowl or uh, on your neck and uh, whatever you want but this is uh, today's lesson so we in the previous lessons we learned different ways to cast on so here now we learn how to do um, knit stitch and we learned that by continuing to do the knit stitch in every row just turning it over doing knit stitch all the way we now have a garter stitch which will sit flat here you can see that it's not going to roll because usually uh, if it's all like a true uh, knit stitch all the way around then you would have to this would start rolling on the edges but this is really nice because it stays flat you can make a, a scarf or a cow so I taught you how to bind off so that you can do those projects. So this, so this, uh, with this lesson, you should be able to make a scarf or make a cowl or even, even placemats. Just make the width you want and the length you want. I hope you enjoyed this video lesson. Make sure you come back for the next lesson. And we're going to be learning a purl stitch and a project we could use with the skills we've learned so far, which is by casting on, doing the knit stitch, and then, and then we'll learn the purl stitch, and we already know the bind off, so I'll teach you a different project you can make. Remember, with this stitch, just with these two stitches, just with casting on the knit and the bind off, you're already able to make a nice little scarf or a cowl by sewing the edges together. Have a great day, and remember always that God loves you.